Well, at least Freddy's doing well. Oh, wait. He's a hurricane. Leafs lose. 4-1. What's that? Four straight? Oh, two, four, and one. Though, better game, better effort, same result. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Carolina, they're just faster. They got to the pucks quicker, and they really pressured the Leafs. Forwards pressured the D. The D pressured the forwards. Forwards pressured the forwards. The heck, the D pressured the D. Carolina were faster than the Leafs. They were. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. The Leafs looked drained at times. They really did. Uh, no matter if it was the beginning of a shift, the middle of the shift, the end of the shift, uh, they looked knackered. Um, but they fought. They fought tonight. And I'm going to say it. This was a process game. And you know, what I, what I mean by process game is, yes, yes, like results matter. But tonight versus an undefeated Carolina team, Progress will suffice. And there was progress made. You know, if you trust the process, they went from absolute trash to improvement, even though they lost. Um, so I'm going to call it like a, a progress game, let's say it that. Uh, but let's be honest. Carolina, they're, they're on another level compared to the Leafs. They are the favorites. They should be beating Toronto. They should be beating Toronto by a couple goals. Look at that team, top to bottom. First line to fourth line, their defensive pair, Freddie Anderson. He's no, he, I guess he's October Freddie, but he's flipped the script, hasn't he? Phenomenal again. Um, anyway, I don't feel as bad as well because Tampa Bay lost 5-1 to Buffalo. So I actually feel better. At least it wasn't 5-1. And at least it was an undefeated team. Oh, wait, Buffalo's 4-1. and one. At least it's not Buffalo. You know what I mean? Um, so for this game, I'm not going to go over all the goals or anything like that. We've all watched the game. These are just my thoughts. So let's start with the positives. First, Jack Campbell made some big saves. He did. He gave the Leafs a chance to get back in it. Gave them a chance to take the lead. Gave them the chance to tie the game. In the second period, in the third period, that one save where it was the transition Aho from the neutral zone to Tara Vine in. Off to the wing, I forget who it was. Back to Tara Vine and fed over to Ajo. Matthews wasn't back in time. Uh, great save. He made a few saves like that tonight. Uh, yes, the third goal, second goal, where the puck was kind of bouncing and Sandine struggled to get body position. Flubbed of a shot, just went through him. Probably wants that back. Campbell gave the Leafs a chance. Okay, Three goals against on, what was it, 30 shots maybe? I thought he played fine. I thought he played fine in front of the Toronto. Um, another positive, Matthews finally on the board. Gets his 200th goal. I think they said in the broadcast he's the fastest since Ovi. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Um, that was nice, uh, the little wraparound there. Obviously, Freddie's probably seen that before in practice uh, throughout the years. Uh, he almost did it again, but he went... Uh, it was like he had like the Spezza hook on his blade. However... Freddie got the toe on that one. But yeah, he got his 200th. Okay. And oh, the Leafs scored first, I think, for the second time this year. Positive. Another positive. Time on attack. Toronto had more time on attack than Carolina, I think, throughout the game. I mean, I guess they did at the end. Um, yeah, they, they held the puck in the, the Canes zone. They created pressure. Uh, maybe not many shots, but, but they, they had sustained pressure. And that was from decent cycle, decent forecheck. There was some havoc in front of the net at times. The Leafs pulling it, pulling the puck out, maintaining it. Uh, first, second, third, fourth line. They all were able to do it at different points in the game. So it's a positive. Um, and on that, they created some chances. Now, did they hit the net in all those chances? No. Did they score in all those chances? No. But they did hit a few posts. Tavares rung one off the post, and that would have made it 2-2, I believe. Um, and then Nylander... Anderson might have got a piece of it with his glove. He hit the post as well, and that could have made the game 3-2, I believe. Those chances go in. It's a different game. Um, but they need to hit the bloody net, don't they? Uh, Angval had a good chance, missed. 
Now, the positive is not many scoring chances, but they generated some chances, which is far better than what happened against Pittsburgh. Um, and then against San Jose, it wasn't just up to the fourth line and Jason Spezza. Um, another positive, Richie's on the fourth line. That's a positive for me. I think he's too slow out there to be playing one, uh, first or second line. Too slow to be with Nylander, too slow to be with Matthews or Marner. Shove him on the fourth line, crash, bang, get in front of the net. And you know what? You got a few chances there. Uh, whacking at the puck, he's a big body. Be there, do a little bit of forecheck. He doesn't need to play 14 minutes a night. He can play eight, nine minutes a night. Uh, he's only $2 million. Throw him on the fourth line, and he can go up if there's injuries. I like him on the fourth line. I don't want to see him up top. Uh, yes, Bunting got a chance up there. He didn't really do much tonight, to be honest with you. But I think Nick Ritchie and his style of play suits the fourth line better than Engvall. I think Engvall's more comfortable with a fluid uh, motion style game. He's not like Spezza who can just jump in and out anywhere, right wing, left wing, center, um, D, if he needs to be, could be. Um, so I think Engvall was better on the third line, Ritchie dropping down to the fourth. Uh, those, those are the only positives there. Other than they, you know, they gave Carolina a run for their money. So we'll go to the negatives because there are, there's quite a few. Um, even though they scored first, they look sluggish out there. At times they look, well, they did get outworked and that caused the Canes many chances. Um, not being able to track back. Uh, Trocek got a breakaway. Nietzsche looked great out there. Um, Leafs couldn't match his, their speed. Um, the D couldn't match the speed. Heck, freaking Slavin. Um, busting it by Nylander. Nylander wasn't ready for that. He did get back in time, but he's like, oh, shoot. Yeah, he's fast. Um, obviously, the Aho bit where Austin was at the end of the shift there, so he was knackered. But um, they did. They look sluggish. And um, is it just me, or are the shifts really long at times? I didn't track it. I didn't have my stopwatch out to track how long shifts were. But, geez. Like, end, end of, like, a shift look like they could barely make it to the bench which you know you want your players to work hard but maybe some time management per shift needs to be down a bit that's just my opinion um another negative um caroline is going to get chances which they did with their speed uh they're gonna forecheck well and they're gonna hem you in your own zone that's gonna happen because they're playing a good team however at key times when toronto needed to have the puck they didn't and carolina kept it in uh, one, a couple in particular, uh, post power play for the Leafs happened a lot. Uh, post penalty kill when they threw out Tavares, Marner, Matthews, or Tavares, Nylander, Matthews, or whoever else, Leafs couldn't get the puck back. Heck, in the third period, was it like four minutes to go? They kill a penalty, they send out the big guys, and then Carolina's fourth line literally holds them in for their entire shift. So they're knackered, they're exhausted, they go off. And then they have to pull Campbell, and then they're out for another two minutes. Long shifts and getting stuck in their own zone, not getting to be able to get that puck back. They really struggle with that, and Carolina took advantage, and it just ate the clock. That's what it did. It literally was like kind of like time wasting. They just ate the clock. Well played by them. That's why they are undefeated, and the Leafs are not. Uh, another negative power play. Yes, I believe Tavares hit the post on the power play. Or no, they weren't even on the power play at that time. Carolina was just, in that time, Carolina was actually exhausted. Um, but the power play was terrible again. Um, second line, second unit did better because they threw something on the net. And yeah, there was they, they only got one shot on goal and on the one uh, that I really analyzed where Matthews, Martin, whoever, they couldn't even get it into the zone. And when they did, they just gave it away. Um, heck, Second unit comes out, and there's like, screw it. Let's just throw it on net and see what happens. Engvall, throw it on net. Sandine, throw it on net. Better chances by the second unit by just throwing the puck on net. Maybe Tavares can shoot. Nylander can shoot. Matthews can shoot. Take a book out of, hell, Columbus. Oh, hi, Line A. Do you want to take a shot? Okay, here, go shoot. Oh, Ovi, do you, do you just want to shoot? Okay. Maybe just shoot the puck. That's just my opinion. Try it. Try it. Go back to to, to the younger years. Oh, I, I get a chance. Oh, there's some bodies in front. Shoot. Shoot the puck. Maybe you can get a tip. Maybe you can do what Carolina does where, you know, they shove someone high and they're just shooting low. Maybe you get a piece of it. Maybe it hits a body and you pull it out and score. 
it could work. They need to shoot the puck. They do. Look at the shots on goal. Of course they do. Um, next, negative. Penalties. Penalties for the Leafs. Uh, they had some bad, bad penalties. Some bad penalties again tonight. Not the best, but hey, I'm still even with that. I would still say it's kind of an improvement. Um, next, oh, Marner's jibs. The teeth, gone. Bottoms messed up. Oh, bless him. So he, he misses some of those teeth. Oh, and he missed an assignment in the game when he got walked by Jacob Slavin. Oh, that edge work was lovely. Marner's looking back like, oh. Looking back like, oh, shit. Yeah, gets walked. I think it was Muzzin and Matthews had a missed assignment there. So after Slavin makes the move, feeds it down to low to Niederreiter. He pulls out front, goes five hole, second five hole goal. Yeah, no, that, what did that make it? That made it 3-1. Beautiful play by Slavin. Marner had a, another rough one. He had another rough one tonight. Um, I liked him better when Matthews wasn't there because he was shooting the puck. Uh, now, I don't know. It looks like playoff Marner. Maybe him losing his teeth would give him time to take a little break. I think. Uh, I think it's just a mental thing. It is, in my opinion anyway. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Maybe playing Chicago will be a, a benefit. And hopefully Flurry plays like crap. Uh, if he even plays. Um, anyway, so that sucks. Uh, Mitch Marner losing the teeth. But hey, he's got, what, $10.9 million per year. Sort that out. Um, another negative I'm going to say is the shots on goal. Shooting. Uh, the post, that sucks. That's going to happen. But missing of the net, especially when you're in the slot, that can't happen. High and wide, high and wide, high and wide. That's all I see. That's all I see. He doesn't need to go bar down every time. He just needs to go in. Just put it on net, boys. Um, and overall, for the shots and goal, there's just not enough. It's like playing like a game of NHL 21 or NHL 22. Um, you can have massive you know, time on attack. Uh, it could be like 16 minutes of time on attack. But if you only get five shots and your opponent somehow has 30, it's unlikely you're going to win. It's unlikely you're going to win. Uh, there's just not enough rubber going actually on net. You know, shots towards the goal? Sure, good. But actually get it on net. Um, also, I got to give kudos, though, to the Canes because their defense in their own zone is absolutely fantastic. Them getting in shooting lanes, breaking up passing lanes, taking the body. Heck, uh, Austin, um, Austin Matthews in the third period uh, just... He goes for for a shot, and Jacob Slavin just gets a stick in the way. That's what he does. Brilliant. Uh, John Tavares gets that wide open chance after a scrum in front of the net, and Jordan Stahl's there. Their defense, forwards, defense, defensive zone play, outstanding. But overall, there's a little bit of light seeping in for the Toronto Maple Leafs. There was glimpses of great play and i'm going to be honest with you if they play like that versus san jose or at least pittsburgh maybe they get the w uh no um it's i'm not going to bring up the rangers game because it wasn't like that because the least threw everything at shesterk and um that wasn't like tonight i wasn't like i just wish you know the leafs would have their own trim shots on net like they did against the Rangers. <clears throat> but I'm going to say, like, I think that Rangers loss impacted how the Leafs played the next two games. The loss to San Jose, obviously, and then Pittsburgh. Um, here, in this game against Carolina, they got back on track a little bit. Um, I think if they do this versus, you know, the troubling team that is the Chicago Blackhawks, they win. Heck, if they hit the net four or five more times, they win by a couple goals, in my opinion, against Chicago. But the last thing they need is to come out flat and lay another egg like they did in Pittsburgh. Uh, this is a big, big game. Yes, even if it's before the 10th game of the season, this is a big game. If this one goes poorly, especially against Chicago, changes will be demanded. 
and I'm assuming they're going to be made quick. And the Leafs fan base, that's already losing their minds. They honestly may have a full breakdown. Like Steve Dangle might be confined to a straight jacket if they lose their next game. Uh, they must beat Chicago. They must. Today was an improvement, even in a loss. <clears throat> they need to take the positives. They need to build on them. They need to take the negatives, you know, the hits, um, not actual physical hits, but from the media, from the fan base, the losses in general. They need to take these negatives and keep moving forward. They need to be Rocky Balboa, uh, and they will find their game. This was a step forward. I'm actually quite surprised at myself. I'm positive in this loss. Um, so Leafs, let's just not ruin it with a loss for Chicago. Bloody win. Come on, boys. Go Leafs, go.